Huntington's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder that currently affects over 30,000 Americans. Although found globally, Huntington's disease has the highest incidence in Europe and North America. It is generally characterized by a slow, steady decline in mental ability and physical coordination. Common symptoms include involuntary movements, muscle rigidity and contractions, and impaired posture and balance. The effects of Huntington's disease are due to a mutation in the gene that encodes a protein called Huntington, causing this protein to misfold. We will discuss the primary and secondary structure of mutant Huntington and the effects of mutations in these structures on the expression of the disease. So what do we know about Huntington? Most of what we know regarding the function of Huntington has been derived from an analysis of its structure and genetic sequence. It is hypothesized that Huntington is normally involved with four main functions, intracellular transport, the regulation of transcription, programmed cell death, and embryonic development. Huntington has a mass of 347 kilodaltons and is composed of 3,144 amino acids. On the N-terminus end, a normal Huntington protein has a repeating region of 11 to 34 glutamine residues. In Huntington's disease, Huntington has over 35 glutamine residues on this N-terminus end. Huntington's primary structure has two notable sequences. First, Huntington contains heat repeats which are repeated sequences of around 40 amino acids believed to be involved in protein transport, microtubule dynamics, and chromosomal segregation. The second notable sequence is a nuclear export signal. This particular sequence, in conjunction with helper proteins called exportins, allow Huntington to travel across the nuclear envelope. In 2013, Mark Diamond's lab determined that the nuclear export signal in Huntington consisted of four amino acids near the N terminus leucine 4, leucine 7, phenylalanine 11, and leucine 14. Experiments in cultured neurons showed that mutations in any of these four amino acids resulted in increased aggregation of Huntington in the nucleus relative to control. Much of what we know regarding secondary and tertiary Huntington structure has come from Miwi Kim's lab in the University of Texas. In 2013, Kim's lab used crystallization techniques to demonstrate that in mutant Huntington, the polyglutamine region can easily change from an alpha helix into a beta hairpin loop. These hairpin regions may be nucleation sites for the formation of beta sheets, which encourage aggregate formation that is toxic to the cell. What is the role of Huntington in Huntington's disease? While the scientific community doesn't know exactly what causes Huntington's disease, studies show that mutant Huntington harms neurons in several different ways. First, fragments at the end terminus of mutant Huntington form due to caspase cleaving or abnormal splicing of Huntington mRNA. These fragments contain long glutamine tracts, which causes them to clump together through hydrogen bonding. Because mutant Huntington contains a mutated nuclear export signal, the n terminus Huntington fragments are trapped inside the nucleus, disrupting transcription of other proteins and other nuclear functions. Another way mutant Huntington negatively impacts cells is through the formation of neuronal inclusions, which are aggregates of whole Huntington proteins these inclusions mainly accumulate in axons and dendrites, where they damage cell structure and warp the nuclear envelope. They also inhibit the transport of important molecules and structures, such as mitochondria, between the cell body and the axons and dendrites. This causes mitochondria and other molecules to clump in the cell body, creating further complications. Finally, mutant Huntington damages the ubiquitin protease system. Normally, when a cell identifies a misfolded protein, the system tags the protein with ubiquitin. Proteases then destroy these ubiquinated proteins. In 2001, Neil Bentz of Stanford University, using green fluorescence protein as a marker of system inhibition, demonstrated that cells expressing mutant Huntington had a 2.3-fold increase in fluorescence relative to control. This showed that mutant Huntington's extended poly-Q sequence inhibits the system, leading to misfolded protein aggregation. While Huntington research has improved our understanding of protein misfolding, there's still much that needs to be researched in order to have a better understanding of this protein. Firstly, the scientific community needs to have a better idea of what the tertiary and quaternary structures of Huntington look like to gain a better idea of the true function of normal Huntington. The scientific community also needs to discover the true cause of toxicity in mutated Huntington and what cellular mechanisms lead to neurodegeneration. Answering these questions will help researchers find therapeutic solutions to Huntington's and other neurodegenerative diseases.